So, Viking challenge. What should I build? Maybe a sex? Ah, that's kind of boring. What about an axe? Mm, that's a little bit cliche, right? Maybe I should do another one of those whips. Oh! That sounds promising. The idea for this build comes from the Switch Axe in Monster Hunter. You basically got an axe and a sword mode that you can switch between and you can see the one in the game is absurdly oversized. So I figured a smaller version might be the perfect fit for the Viking challenge. And that also gives me the opportunity to change some problems I see in the Monster Hunter design. First up, the thing is only held together by hopes and dreams. I don't see any reason how the transformation works apart from this little channel and that doesn't even explain half of it. Now there are also Switch X designs that are more grounded and realistic but I think those lack the original flair the transformation has. And they also don't have the 10,000 unnecessary potential failure points that I like to incorporate in my builds. These were some of my earlier designs but those didn't really fit the Viking theme so after some sketching I came up with this. I also wanted to build something that allows to choke up on the handle like you would when swinging an axe because I think that would be one of the main advantages of having an axe mode. If you've seen my folding sword videos, you're probably familiar with this construction by now. I've got two mild steel claddings that are tick welded with a high carbon steel at the core, which creates this metal taco that leaves some room for the spine to slide into. For the X segment, I want to try something different because you can see both of them overlapping right here. I actually have to make the cladding of the X segment wider than the widest part of the tip segment. It has to be pretty sturdy, but I don't want to get that sturdiness by just increasing the thickness of the cladding material right here. I want to try something different, which is a technique called fluting in armoring. You're putting these creases into the material. If you imagine this is the sheet metal that you're actually pushing it upwards like this. So you've you've got like a ridge with a piece of paper if you hold it like this it could just flop down like this but if i put a crease in here basically like a reinforcement you can see i can hold the paper like this and this is basically the same thing we're doing with metal okay i think this looks sharp enough let's do the others I mean, it's barely noticeable which <laughs> which side was the first one I made and which side is the second one I made after having a little bit of practice. Um, I already went over this one again just now and it still looks horrendously different. This has to go... Oh, wait, this is the wrong way around. These have to go in here. Okay, I've been trying around with my design. Now this is what I sketched up. This is what I've got. Uh, this segment got a lot longer than I planned, at least a lot longer than I had drawn it. Kinda like the look of it though, because you can imagine if I would shorten it, it would be like this. Hmm. That also means my guiding rail is completely uh, not the right shape. So you can imagine this thing is getting heavier with more metal added. And then we've also got more inertia, putting more stress on the whole system when it's impacting something. So <laughs> at first I was actually trying to do something that's a little bit simpler so that I don't have those problems. And hopefully the thing will actually hold together. But uh, I mean, come on, it's a big X. What am I supposed to do? We might have a little bit of a problem. Now we've also got the pin going through here. Everything looking good, right? Problem is the spine just casually bumping up against the pin because it's in the middle where the spine is supposed to be. I filed out a recess like this. It would all fit in there nicely. You can imagine when this thing is in X mode, when I hit something, all of the force is going to concentrate right here, which means that the weakest spot would be this where I've got the recess for the pivot point. 
I think I should do some very scientific calculations to figure out whether this is strong enough. Nope, 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 nope. Not good. I think I know how to solve the whole issue with connecting both segments. But first, let's actually try and thin both of these down a little bit more. Switching between sword and axe mode might be difficult. But you know what isn't? Switching your virtual location with NordVPN. Today's sponsor. We've all been there. You watch too much YouTube while on your mobile data. And now that your volume's depleted, that free Wi-Fi doesn't look so bad after all. I mean, what's the worst that could happen? None of that with NordVPN. With their 5,000 servers in over 60 countries, your personal data is safe from prying eyes. Love NordVPN. One subscription allows you to protect six devices. And if you go to nordvpn.com slash Nord, you'll get a huge discount on your NordVPN plan, plus four months for free. It's risk-free with Nord's 30-day money-back guarantee. But my favorite feature has to be their threat protection, as it protects you from malicious files and trackers even when you're not connected to a VPN. So go on over to nordvpn.com slash Nord and get a huge discount on your NordVPN plan with four extra months for free. It's risk-free with their 30-day money-back guarantee. Got the bevels roughly shaped and now to fix the connection issue. There we have it. Got the spine bar going through there and you can see no hole. This is what the connection will look like. The blue part is the X segment and the orange part is a washer that I'll be welding on. With all of this out of the way, I think I can actually harden it so that after that we can weld everything together. Okay, I let the oxide set for one day. I haven't seen this in the daylight yet, so let's have a look. I think it turned out pretty nice. I just cleaned off the oil and had a little sneak peek and... <laughs> oh my God. Ah, this is looking fantastic. I really like the wire brushed finish because it gives this almost like matte satin look. I love it. Crazy how bright the blue actually gets. But you guys know how it is with these projects. One thing goes well and two things go bad. The X segment turned out pretty good. Happy with this, but the tip segment has a couple of issues. So I had a pretty, pretty huge bend in the blade, which I could get out of by shim tempering. Like with the folding saw, I had a problem with this thin sheet metal just bending all over the place. This was pretty bent and I tried to bend it back in shape. You can see I had a split open up right here which means i have to weld this again and i'll try my best to not heat up the edge but i'm pretty sure that it'll overheat so i have to re-quench the whole thing okay i gotta say i'm not too happy about the thickness of the connection where the blade segment is connected to the uh, outer cladding so i want to do some little stress test i mean i overheated it already so i have to heat treat it again so i thought might as well while i'm at it try if it actually worth saving or if i should just start over again <laughs> I think it's all right. Also tried hitting the sides to see whether side pressure would crack the, the cladding and I actually just bent it. Let's see if I can bend it back without destroying it. So far, even the spots that look pretty thin don't really show any sign of wear. If it manages this, the welds should be uh, strong enough. Time to fix this up. Let's get a little bit of this stuff. I really didn't expect that I would manage to get it fixed up this nicely, I gotta say. 
get a little bit of a different angle. Looks nice, right? Oh shit. Good news, this is probably one of the cleanest welds I've ever done. The bad news is something went wrong apparently while welding because straight. Holy Jesus! What is that? What the f is that? This this should be straight towards the camera. Alrighty, so this is where we are so far. The connection turned out better than I was expecting. Really solid. Now that the easy part is done, <laughs> let's move on to the handle. Uh, you can already see I did this thing again. You probably remember when I said that the first uh, concept of this thing was supposed to be like half of this size because uh, with all this size and weight there are a lot of problems uh, associated. The sword mode really isn't a problem. You've got a handle, we've got this thing pretty sturdy. Switching over to the X mode. Now the whole point of switching to X version is that the point of balance moves forward a lot so we've got a whole lot of momentum going in x mode with the small version i was like okay maybe mild steel should be fine it's not that big it was supposed to be half of this length probably be at a weight of about one and a half kilos a little bit over three pounds the problem is holding this thing sideways even like the slightest little bit of of doing this the flex isn't what I'm worried about, it's starting to bend. I've got some new steel delivered. I went for a more flexible um, steel because I think it'll bend, but I wanted to spring back into place. Okay, I'm finally at a point where I can somewhat assemble this thing together. Now I want to connect this with this. So I know how far to continue this so that I can weld this on here. So that then we can weld this on here. And then we can make the handle. <sighs> Pretty regular construction if I've ever seen one. It doesn't look right. Why doesn't it look right? Uh, this looks good. Let's see if it actually worked. This is M3, so hello. Nice, okay, perfect. Oh boy, this looks nice. Love it.
Now there's a little problem with my quench tank. It's too short. And the replacement I've got to make a new one is also too short. So I had to come up with a temporary solution. But first I'll decorate the spine a bit. And yes, I have to go full Breaking Bad with my outfit. This is probably my favorite and at the same time most hated task, as the tool I'm using is creating razor sharp metal splinters. Just having a dozen of them stuck in your hand is annoying enough, but after 4 hours I've created probably a couple thousand of them. I don't like where this is going. Oh boy. Okay, I don't think I can screw this up even further, so might as well try the nuclear option. Uh, yeah, the spine was bent in every direction and I actually ended up having to heat treat it again, but at least I managed to get it somewhat straight. Next up was doing the epoxy for the second sliding handle piece. I tried to seal up the holes as much as possible with amber dust and CA glue and then just like the first piece I carefully filled it up with amber and clear epoxy. This was a bit stressful as the smallest leak could definitely end in a catastrophe and I don't think I would be able to clean it out of the spine without taking everything apart. Thankfully though everything went well. Next day it cured for about like 10 hours now and it's cured enough so that it doesn't run anymore but i can still put an indentation with my fingernails so gotta be careful with this definitely can't grind it yet this worked great you can see it still moves but uh we've got another problem with the guard on here it's pretty difficult to sand this flush like i did the other side i tried my best with the ca glue to not have this glued in there this screw but it's stuck Ah, hello! Ha! Barely, barely warm right here, so the epoxy should be fine. And we've got it out of here, hello! Nice. Now it's actually getting a little bit more stressful. So, so far this is the only piece that's actually permanently on there now to assemble this whole thing we actually have to work our way up from here starting with the butt cap i did the whole back piece uh, off camera basically the same thing as the guard just uh, as a butt cap like this Ooh, look at this i really love the combination of blue and gold okay and now i only have to somehow get this over to the welding table You know what, I kind of like the look of this, being like the end of the, of the butt cap, so that it sort of like tapers down. Put this in here and then I'll balance this until it's hanging straight. And now with everything assembled it's time to put on the finishing touches.
Special thanks to my patrons Bash, Aina, Harpeter and Can You Even Take It. If you want to support my work and don't like Patreon, you can go on over to my website to grab one of the Switch X coins I made for this video. There will only ever be 40 of them, so get one while they last. Also check out the other channels participating in the Viking Challenge. The playlist is linked below and as always you can vote for your favorite build. This time we've also got over 30 viewer submitted builds that are brawling it out over amazing prizes from the challenge sponsors. If you want to participate in the next challenge, make sure to follow Terrell Knifeworks for updates.